is based on uh, my socialism as well. So again, just to, to, to highlight that initially. Um, the, the possible value we have to debate here is that um, I'm a member of an organisation that made a conscious political decision to prioritise community work and to build a base in working class areas and be answerable to working class people and to attempt to politicise the area that I represent and that, that, and, and that, that, I, that I live in. Um, it, it probably gives me an opportunity to maybe highlight the, the fact that republicanism isn't seen on the ground in these areas, doesn't have an impact in those areas, and maybe prompt a debate among people here as to why that is, that, that is currently the case. Um, again, I wouldn't be a popular speaker on the left because my analysis of the left has been an absolute and total failure. As we pass through possibly the, the greatest crisis in capitalism since the Great Depression, we have had no impact at all on the current status quo. Like, there was a, a protest last night and a protest today down at the Convention Centre, as Tommy has already referred to, with some of the primary architects of austerity and was forming the dog at most. Unfortunately, it was worse than that. It was a couple of clowns in masks, middle class students out for some sort of adventure, legitimising the over policing of a police of a peaceful march, which makes things even more difficult for the likes of me to go back to my community and try and encourage ordinary people to attend. But that, 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 that's a that's a minor that's a that, 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 that's a minor criticism. The biggest criticism is that there was under 150 people oh, on a on a well publicised de 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 demonstration. And my criticism of the left, um, I'm equally critical, critical of republicanism. And again, I'll start with the positives for a change. My, in my dealings with republicanism and republican events, the class composition of, the, of repu republican displays huge potential. Like, and meetings like this, meetings that the society have put on before, the events and commemorations, always attract an overtly working class audience, <coughs> unlike the left in general, which doesn't. So I think there's huge potential for people who actually come from the areas that we would like to represent to actually be involved previously without people having to go into those areas. I think it's hugely positive that the people from those areas are already involved. And if we can convince people to maybe go back into their, their own communities and begin to politicise and begin to agitate within the communities as opposed to, you know, Leinster House or whatever protest point, uh, even the convention centre today, that's not as important as mobilising people within the communities. When we have the ability to mobilise people within the communities, when we have some sort of support base within the communities, we can then begin to strengthen, strengthen the, the, the unified communities across the country, and then we can begin to look at the bigger picture, like the convention centres or whatever. Notice the state are very, very aware of this potential, the working class potential of republicanism. They have spent years repressing that. They've spent a fortune on repression of republicanism <coughs> and, and republicans. When you compare the uh, state activities against republic, republicans compared to that against the left or any other um, political entity, there's, there's absolutely no comparison. So the state knows the danger. So what we need is for us to realise the potential and to convince other people of that of that of that potential. Um, so they, uh, apologies for, for uh, not having the glasses. Again, it's understandable that during the war years that the Republican Republicanism would have been so focused on fight when we're fight, we're fighting the Brits, fighting against the occupation of part of the country. We can understand it, the focus being on the armed struggle. We may not agree with it, but it is understandable. That is not now the case, and there is a genuine opportunity to direct that energy, that commitment, into organising people for the benefit of the majority, for the benefit of the country, and using the potential that we have, that I've already spoken about, to have an impact somewhere. To have an impact. Again, it's very, very noticeable that in any of the campaigns 
even as the relatively successful campaigns like the campaign against the household tax, which was markedly different from the campaign against the property tax because of the impact that revenue had in getting involved. But it's very, very noticeable that there was little or no Republican input, <coughs> organized Republican input. Plenty of individuals, a couple of organizations, but no impact. And when Republican, various Republican organizations did turn up, they were merely piggy piggybacking on other people's events. They didn't seem to have the ability to self-organize and to be seen in a leadership role. And again, the attraction for that is because historically we've seen that when it comes to confrontation with the state, we, be, we can be guaranteed the left will bottle it. We can be guaranteed the left will not challenge the state. I would argue that's down to class composition of the left. We can, we can argue that at another, another stage or another point or whatever. But what we do know is that Republicans have always challenged the state. Always challenged the state. So why when we have, and we do have, we did have mass mobilization on the property tax, on the household tax, and other issues, being taxes, whatever they are, relatively mundane issues in the overall scheme of the fight against capitalism, but they were mass mobilizations, something that very few people here can claim to be involved in organizations that have done likewise. On occasion, the HBOX, uh, the housing action groups, on occasion we have managed to tap into the, the mass consciousness, but, but in general we haven't. So Republicans need to ask themselves, why they weren't there as organizers. I'm not saying in a leadership role, because in general the working class don't need leadership. The, the working class know where they have to go. They just need to have faith in somebody to go on the same journey as them. And I think that explains an awful lot as to why there is no, appears to be no alternative to what's down in the convention center tonight. Um, I just, again, I have a note here that it mainly, may, maybe, uh, uh, you know, a slight criticism is that a lot of the younger Republicans, though hugely committed to the cause, maybe lack some sort of class consciousness and something that maybe Republican organizations could look towards. Trying to make the link between the socialist ideology and the Republican ideology and make it clear that they're intertwined. And again, I won't attempt to quote Connolly because I'm no doubt I'll get it wrong, but he pointed out many a time that we're wasting our time if we're simply going to replace the Brits with, with an Irish ruling class in, the, in the tw uh, 22 counties. We're wasting time. There is no attraction for working class people. Working class people will only fight for something that will benefit them and our communities. And a change in leadership in the country based on the current class system will not be attractive, in, in my opinion. So I apologize, I really, I, sorry, I, can't, I can't read this at all. So again, the, 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 uh, the majority of it is just a repeat of what I've already said. There is one other, what I'd consider, elephant in the room, and that's the criminality within Republicanism, or maybe could be this, uh, described as criminality masquerading as Republicanism. <laughs> I, think, I think the problem with this is that in, sorry, in my opinion, it's worse than it's ever been. And I won't name particular events, organizations, or whatever. I, my personal opinion, I think anybody that on the ground will realize that it is a serious, serious problem. And as I've always claimed, working class people are not stupid. Working class people will know what's going on. And if they don't have trust in what, what people beat them, Republicans, socialists, liberals, or whatever, are telling them if they do not believe what they're being told, they will not support. And until Republicanism in general confronts what I see as a major issue, I don't think we can overcome the obstacles that are already there. And the obstacles are difficult enough to overcome in the current situation. But I think that elephant in the room must be addressed by Republicans. Apologies for not having the glasses. The, um, what, the rest I have here probably isn't of much more interest than, than I've already said. So, the, as I said, my understanding was to try and get it of the meeting was to try and get a debate going from the floor. Good morning. I've known Kieran Perry for some years now, and I'm going to say this about Kieran Perry is 
that he is a straight, <coughs> you may agree with him or you may disagree with him, but it comes straight from the shoulder and I think we have experience of that and a very useful contribution in my opinion to Kieran. Sorry, Tommy, can I just make one, one last point? Sorry. People out there too are looking for some sort of leadership and unfortunately the de facto leadership is the, the, the micro groups on the left who I've said again aren't reliable for confrontation with the state or the free men and the fellow travellers of the free men who you know, basically base their ideology on pseudo um, legalistic bullshit. Oh, so no. while a lot of them may be genuine <coughs> And they really wouldn't feel that they're doing the best they can do. Unfortunately, we have to be much, much, much more critical of what's required to progress from here. Apologies for me for saying an old guy out there. Okay, thanks. I, I, I tell you, gentlemen, I, what I will do is I'll take the next speaker and then there'll be plenty of time for conversation. Uh, our next speaker is Barry Monteith. Barry is a a councillor in Dungannon and District Council. Barry has also been very instrumental, and I'm sure many of you in the room will know, in promoting the 1916 Societies uh, group that has been put together, not so much, I suppose, to rescue republicanism, but certainly to roll back the revisionism that would undermine the philosophy and has played a wonderful part in doing that. So Barry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom. Um, uh, it's an honour here to be here in Dublin um, and to uh, uh, excuse the use of an, uh, an, uh, an American uh, term, our nation's yellow. And I think it's important to go in the lead up over the next coming years and, and people who have been around me over the last couple of years will know that the point that I have, they're probably sick listening to me, I keep saying all roads lead to Dublin here for the next couple of years. And I think it's a very valuable lesson, I suppose, what I'm going to try and do is give a very brief sort of rundown of maybe the experience of Republicanism uh, on, on the left in, in the North, as I see it. Um, but I think, particularly for uh, people in the North, in the six counties, I think it, 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 there is a, a, a big issue in relation to a pernicious mindset, and it, it follows right through many of organisations which should, on the face of it, be all Irish organisations, um, but, but that makes sense there. So I think it is important that Advanced Against Their Health Dublin, and I think it's even more important that people make <coughs> the effort that comes from all over Ireland uh, to attend Advanced Against. Um, briefly, my background, um, I got involved in Republicanism as a teenager, um, and to began on least her own, um, listening to, to stories of the next bikes of people like the man on my left. Um, <laughs> uh, and I was thought most young people, or most people in age at that time, the natural thing would have been to come involved in the provincial movement and the Sinn Féin and that. And uh, I was elected as a Sinn Féin councillor in 2001 and subsequently again in 2005. Um, so there are people in the room who, who would have been involved in Sinn Féin when I was there and would, would know that. Uh, a lot of issues, not just in relation to Republicanism, but a lot of issues on the left would have, would have major issues with, with how they were being manifested at the time. Um, to my mind, it was being paid lip service to, um, and to my mind, there was no follow through. Probably the same as what Kieran's saying. Um, a lot of rhetoric in order to keep people on board um, without any, ever any real intention of, of delivering um, for the working working class people. In 2008, um, I made the decision. Um, and a lot of other people in East Rome made decisions at a similar time um, to disengage from uh, Sinn Féin. Um, I saw it, and, and, and there were a variety of issues and, and, and issues maybe and, 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 and strategy positions, but basically, as far as I was concerned, the overall party political strategy that Sinn Féin was engaged in that stage, to my mind, I got the stage where I was of the opinion, and still am firmly of the opinion, that that party political strategy would not lead to the unification of our country. Um, Added to that, to my mind, was the abandonment uh, of left-wing principles. Um, complete, utter, and total. Um, what we have in the Six County Arrangement at the Stormont is a neoliberal clique which uh, has made no attempt, um, even with the powers that it, that it has, um, to deliver for ordinary people. Uh, and examples of that, uh, and what limited powers that the Stormont regime has, they have power over employment, for example. 
and power over labor relations and power over the law. There has not been one attempt by any of the so called left wing parties, whether it be Sinn Fein or SDLP, uh, to reform um, employment law and employment rights. And indeed, any attempts um, made by outside bodies to, to get that forward are accused of being practical and of being not realistic in the current economic climate. Uh, this will scare away investors, scare away the great and the good, um, but it doesn't scare away Martin and Peter from Robin the Bell and Wall Street. And again, you know, the, the, the bones of all this, you know, and, and these big adventures and these jumpers over to America, Japan, and these places, you know, and there was a great, great story made, uh, I think it was 2011, um, well, there was a big delegation from all over Ireland, went to America, and the Americans were taking over here, and wind and dine and all that. There was a big announcement that the New York City workers head pension fund was going to invest hundreds and hundreds of millions into projects and community projects and social and uh, social economic projects in the north. As of uh, March 2014, not one. If you analyze back, and there are people who have done a better job of this than, than me, um, if you analyze back to all these big announcements, when you cut to the bones, none of this gets delivered on. What does get delivered on? Uh, one of the biggest issues in the north at the minute is um, the, the, the cost of housing, uh, whether that be um, the cost of, of rent in the private sector uh, or the inability for, for people to get mortgages and things they got to get themselves set up for homes and families. Uh, the, the umpteen craze, again, Stormont has the power to do this, to introduce uh, landlord regulation, uh, introduce uh, rent control, um, to introduce an independent body to set rents. Um, and umpteen community organisations have made the attempt to lobby Stormont to do that. Three times they've got as far as uh, meeting with the relevant committee, and three times it has been voted out. There are 108 MLAs, over 80 of them are private landlords. Right across the spectrum. It's not all concentrated in the parties that you would uh, suspect. The so called left wing parties have plenty of landlords within them as well. So, Turkey's aren't going to vote for Christmas. And we're told of Ongly Code. Ongly Code is drawn for, for someone who is treating their tenants, their tenants with respect and treating their tenants with uh, dignity. Uh, but if Ongly Code is no good to a slum, it's of no benefit to a tenant who is renting an end of a slum landlord. What else has been delivered? Just there this week, and we were talking about it the QR way down, DUP uh, and Sinn Féin, uh, despite their protestations that they would fight to secure the rights of ordinary people, have voted together to increase the pension age in the north to 70. So anybody under the age of 40 will not be able to retire until they're 70. Um, so they, those are just practical things um, that, that, that would spring out of me, and you could go into a litany of them. Um, but the reality is the working classes, or the working class people have been involved. Despite the fact that the, workers, the working class, again, to you, to you to turn me here a lot now, the working class as regards the Republican struggle uh, did the happiness. The working class, uh, was, the, was the, 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 the section of the community uh, <coughs> that was dying, that was getting blown up, that was going out and fighting for its rights, going out and defending its own people, being incarcerated in jail, being exiled from their families. They had been fought. What do we have in this place? What we have is a corporate Northern Irish identity, which has been sold across the board as some sort of template for peace. And it would break your heart, and it breaks my heart, because undoubtedly the people of, of, of the different places around the world, uh, and all the great and the good, have been uh, taken over into Iraq and Afghanistan, and Martin McGuinness and Jerry Kelly, and Peter Robinson, and Jeffrey Donaldson, come over and dictate <coughs> the people that the high used to do a so called a peace process. And it's Peace Process PLC. And that's exactly what it was all. It's a, a Put together the Clinton administration uh, when deals are done and the new administrations are put in place with the neoliberal agenda and the concentration is not on uh, encouraging indigenous people or indigenous uh, jobs and industry and manufacturing. What to do is sell cheap labour <coughs> and focus on uh, luxury tourism. That's the only, that's the only uh, plan you ever see or hear of in the north and you hear a lot of in the south is tourism, tourism, tourism. 
Now, the argument that you know, most people, the only people I know that make money out of tourism are people that own uh, chains of hotels and golf resorts and things like that. Um, I think Spain is the biggest tourist destination in Europe and they're in the middle of the biggest recession. But the numbers of people who go on holidays to Spain has not significantly changed. Um, but yet tourism is supposedly going to be the, the issue that's going to sales and save the Irish people. Um, what do the Irish people do? Fortunately, what the Irish people are doing, what they've done for generations, they're leaving. Um, the Gyan, where I'm from, and the surrounding hinterland, there's a population of about 30 to 40,000. In 2012, out of a population of 30,000, 418 year olds left the growth of the state. Yeah, that's, uh, that was the biggest year, the year before that, I think it was just over 300, and every year uh, since that's been similar. So they reckon now that uh, London and Yanmary alone, which is only a small part of a, a, you know, one quarter of Tyrone, that there may be anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 young people between the ages of 20 and 25 in the state. Now, I have a population of 30 to 40,000. That has a massive impact in the long term for rural communities, for industries, for local schools, uh, and which we will not see uh, for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, Michael Noonan tells us that this is a lifestyle of choice. That people have emigrated as they always done to better themselves. We all know that that's nonsense. Uh, it's a uh, financial core reality which forces young people to emigrate. <coughs> um, the other issues we have, um, and again the corporate thing, is the selling of the Northern Irish identity. It's a big, one of the biggest issues I believe that Republicanism faces at the moment, particularly uh, in the North. And, and it's go back to this, the partitionist mindset, um, where more and more people uh, in the North identify themselves as Northern Irish, and indeed large section of the population in, in the South uh, refer to North the campaign that I think Republicans can be involved in is to remove the issue of being Irish, remove the issue of, of, of nationality and not to be afraid of it. Um, and that there's nothing wrong with being proud of your national flag, there's nothing wrong with uh, being proud of singing your national anthem or all being, all that type of thing. Because it's all being eroded and it's all being pushed away on a, on a corporate strategy. Um, you know, we have issues now for years. The people, the, the small examples I think best of it to, give, uh, to, to get things across as give examples. For years, I'm sure everybody here has been aware of it. The people of Derry City campaigned for years to have the official name of their city, the, the name that we all use as Derry City. <coughs> One fell swoop of the British government, and now we have everybody, nationalist, so called Republican, all using the term London Derry. Despite a noble fight campaign, agitation, by the ordinary people at Derry for generations. All that work has been just destroyed with corporate cultural tourism. Unfortunately, uh, by the noble uh, cultural organisations like Tokus and people like that could rule in the England. All because of who, who pays the paper thanks to the chief. Uh, it's a thing that I stress which is we need to be confident enough and I'm not an isolated media groups and people like this all the time. Yes, it's particularly important, but you all can compliment and say no. Never compromise yourself. There's fun out there and you need to do it and it suits you to do it, do it but you don't compromise yourself. You know, this compromise, you know, conference is people saying, well sure, why, why would the people that are you know, it's worth millions of pounds to them? You know, and as a gentleman said that to me, sure that the time that we talk of city, UK city culture things coming up, it's worth millions of pounds to them, sure, so it's only a, it's only a word. And I says, if you get an Irish passport, he says, I have a buy. I says, what should you sell it for? He says, don't you spend an Irish money? I wouldn't sell my passport. He says, why in a situation that people are trying to be forced, because money's been through them, to be a city in the UK. Um, and all the time, uh, this is being controlled by the British establishment and by MA5, um, who have their hand all over the place. MA5 openly recruit, openly approach people on a regular basis. Um, the no such thing as years ago, you would hear people get approached by special branches and British military intelligence and whatever they were challenged, they would have denied it and would have denied it. We don't do that. It's all up on a little board now. You're approached by MI5 and sent to your solicitor. MI5 will do back to your solicitor. So, what's your problem? Of course, we're going to approach these people. Of course, we're going to approach people. This is our job. We are here, we are staying. You know, 20 million base built outside Belfast for MI5. 
Um, you know, the initiative uh, uh, where, where posters are put up recently there, um, um, saying that PSNA people should not perform MA5. And um, there was a local uh, outside of meeting today, uh, Town Centre Economic Development meeting at Dungyan. Uh, one of the local Sinn Féin council before the meeting started, the one said to me, is there some issue why, why signs are put up in relation to MA5 in the town? And then uh, says, well, occupation of our country would be a start. <laughs> But that's for her to, 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 to say. Um, again, the, the, the big corporate image um, of, of uh, tracking the number of investment and all is proved there last week to be an absolute disaster. Um, the most recent figures show that actually the recession, the world rate recession in the six counties, was actually deeper, harder, and will last longer than the recession in the 26th. Those are official statement figures. Which, of course, uh, appear on the bottom of websites, on page 40 of the local papers behind the death notices and things like that. Uh, but those were figures that were released there last, last, um, last week. Uh, the working class is assault, has, has been ideological war uh, on the British system, has been declared on their own working class and the working class. And um, as the same as, uh, as you can see down here, the cuts and things like that, you know, uh, the cuts are most definitely not, as, <coughs> we, as everybody here knows, a response to uh, economic um, crisis or unforeseen circumstances. Uh, they are an ideologically driven, and indeed, when the so called economy returns for the right wing, these cuts are staying, and uh, these issues will stay. And the, the ordinary people will continue to be punished and, and suffer. For, for their everyday lives, and I suppose that's on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what I spend most of my time doing, is fighting for ordinary people and working on those type of issues, um, housing and welfare rights and things like that. So early 21st century Republicanism, um, it's a strange place. Um, sometimes maybe from the outside observer, an uh, uh, incomprehensible place, or a fearful place. Um, to the casual observer, many people might think that it's uh, a life support. However, when you scratch the surface and uh, meetings like this and up and down the country uh, over the last number of years, um, it's really seen that it is not there. The Republican spread is in the Irish people. And it's important that we as Republicans find a way to scratch that surface and bring that out. Um, a lot of it, I, I believe, a lot of the issues is, is a fear, a problem of mindset. And as Kieran alluded to it as well, um, we as Republicans always have to, to be conscious of how we portray ourselves and how we project the image of Republicanism. Um, while there are many hard, contentious issues which that is quite great and proper, Republicans have to have very principled stances on and campaign on and work on, we also have to be unconscious that we have to explain and be positive to people about what we're for. Very often Republicanism is defined by what it's against. We're against that, we're opposed to this, and the left would have the similar issues. Um, so I, I think the most vital thing for me is that yes, you, you have your, your principal position, but you need to be saying and trying to articulate to the people of what you're for. So it's a good thing to be a Republican. That's an enjoyable thing to be a Republican. You know, it's enjoyable to be a Republican to stand up for ordinary people's rights, to stand up for your fellow man, your fellow woman, the virtues of, of solidarity with, with, with uh, other people and, and uh, solidarity with international struggles across the world. You know, I see it as a privilege to call myself a Republican. It's a very important thing. It's something that has a very strong lineage from history. And that's the, the type of attitude that I try to, to, to sort of encourage people to put forward and put forward myself. Um, <coughs> Republicanism is, is the, the term we need, we need to let go of it slightly, as in, we need more people, we shouldn't be as precious of it. You know, we as Republicans very often are, are very easily saying, well, they're not Republican because of this, and these people aren't Republicans because of that, and these people aren't Republicans because of that. It's important, I think, that we uh, encourage more and more people to use the term, encourage more and more people to be confident in saying to someone, you know, I'm a Republican. And, but to say that I'm a Republican because I believe in, 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 in a, in a 32 county uh, republic uh, on the island, not because they're Republican, because they belong to or affiliate to a uh, Republican organization. 
you know, very, very often and too often, uh, people have defined their Republicanism by their membership of or allegiance to a particular organisation. Well, I'm a Republican because I support such and such. We're Republicans because we support a 32 county Republican. Um, so very often we think ourselves excluding ourselves from the very issues that Gear has alluded to, where we should be involved in, and involved in for the right reasons. Not involved in the trying to take over, not involved in the trying to control, but involved in because it's the right thing to do, to fight for the rights of the ordinary people. To re-engage on a positive and a proud fashion for the Irish people. Uh, and at these times, to, to, to re-engage over with what some people would try to say are old-fashioned concepts of sovereignty and of, 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 of uh, separatism um, from, from the British state uh, and, and indeed from the economic model in the European Union. Uh, and that, that's for on a personal level, I, I, you know, I always thought that the thing, that, that the positive message for us is to say that uh, you have the right to be free, you have the right to decide your own destiny, you have the right to a republic, you have the right to stand up and decide how that republic acts and behaves on your behalf, you have the right to say how that republic uh, portrays itself across the world. The Irish people have forgotten that. They've forgotten that that's what the republic is about, that it's of the people, and that the people decide uh, the, the machinery of government, and the people decide uh, how they portray themselves to, to across the world. And indeed, I think that's the very, over the next number of years, that's the very <coughs> issue that we need to be pushing as hard as we can, is the sovereignty of the people. The demand for uh, national sovereignty, the demand for the rights of the Irish people to be free, for the Irish people to have their own republic. Uh, and you know, that's why the One Irish One Vote campaign, I think, is such a strong campaign and one that has the ability to engage people who might necessarily class themselves or have ever thought, ever thought that much about it, um, to be a Republican, to have a, a noble Republican stance, and demand their rights, just like Scotland is about to get its rights here in September. Um, and I, you know, that, to me, that gives a fantastic opportunity for the Irish people to be saying, well, you know, Scotland is that we should have seen. You know, the Malvinas are going to get the, the opportunity here for a vote. Now, Debbie, the Brits are only giving them a, a vote because they're pretty confident the result. However, the, the, the principle is one that, that we should be fighting for. The irony isn't lost on us all, and it's alluded to, and I'm sure uh, uh, people have heard of it last night on, 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 the, on the news. You have the, the, the different elements of the British government uh, having the bare face cheek to talk about the national sovereignty of the Ukraine. <coughs> and how dare another country uh, step in uh, and maintain by use of uh, military force? Uh, an element of that country. It, it's actually laughable, you know. And you think, and you, and you feel like screaming at, and you feel like screaming because the interviewer is not saying, "Look, we're here, look at Ireland." But it's time for us as Irish people to start putting that image out again and, and start saying, "Look at Ireland. Look at what you have done, Ireland. And look at what you are continuing to do, Ireland. You have destroyed our, our uh, the opportunities we have to build a successful future for all of our people, for all of our children, and you've done that." by economic oppression, and you've done it through military force. So, to, to sum up, we should, to my mind as Republicans, we should focus on what we're about, focus on what we're for, focus on the needs of the Irish people, the sovereignty of the Irish people, uh, and in the run-up, usually, you know, 2016 I often say, you know, yes, they'll be great and the good, and everybody will be commemorating and all that type of thing, but there will be a natural flow of the Irish people, there will be a natural patriotism that will rise in the Irish people, and I think it's important that that natural <coughs> pressure that will come into the Irish people is met with a positive attitude and a positive response by, from Republicans. You know, the Brits say we're confident, we're proud, you know, and we look for the good in people, and look for the good in the Republican message. So, we, 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 you know, as I said, the, the, the convention, the societies there a couple weeks back in, 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 in the Rotunda, just across the way, no, let's put our chest out, let's put our sins up to be proud. We're Republicans. We've not to be ashamed of them. All we, could do, what we need to do is go out there and talk to people and encourage people that Republicans doesn't belong to us, it belongs to all of you. This evening is to have a discussion, and we've heard from both our speakers, in ways both speakers have uh, focused on many of the issues that have and continue to trouble the people, the social and economic issues, 
the economic issues that have deprived and continue to deprive the people of this island of the ability to govern themselves. If you don't have control of your economy, you don't have control of your sovereignty. It's as simple as all that. Uh, that has been clear, clearly outlined. There's also, from what I'm getting from the two speakers, is that many of the issues are bubbling to the surface, but we don't have a clear direction or we don't have a clear plan for how to proceed. And I think that's reasonably obvious. Quite clear also that we, we certainly do need a broad-based anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, republican, <coughs> socialist movement. It's also clear at the same time that we don't have that working consensus around how we would build it. We have got to, to work on that. Arguably, at some stage, hopefully maybe sooner or later, we need a party to help organise that. But clearly we are a long distance away at the moment from the type of refined agreement and consensus that will allow us to do that. There's a lot of work to be done and there's nothing more disruptive than trying to move too fast with any of these, any of these issues because uh, dissension and split by trying to move too fast causes more problems and are a greater setback. There's a huge need for and before the end of this, I'm going to refer to a, a small initiative that uh, some of us are involved in in an attempt to promote this type of discussion. And there's also been assisted uh, by Barry and the societies in Tyrone, the Patrick Nobel Socialist Republic Forum. But what I will now hope to do is, in light of that, that what's really needed, and this is one of the wonderful things that's been facilitated tonight, is this discussion. Uh, and this isn't a debate, it's a discussion in a comedy and friendly environment on the way forward and how we, how, how we arrive at even at the consensus to take it to the next stage. So what we'll hope for now, and listen, what I will say is this, that this is a comprehensive discussion we're having and as well as that, keep in mind it's now quarter to nine on a Friday evening and I don't intend to be here on Saturday morning. <laughs> 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 <laughs>